All right, everybody wants to see inside, including me. So uh, this is the uh, HP 8591E. And so we'll take a look inside and see what we can see. So people have seen the, people have seen the front. So let's, uh, let's move this around so we can see what's inside here. Um, yeah, let me, let me move the camera a little bit. All right, so the input's over there, and it comes into this, this section down to this way. So let's, let's tilt it up a bit. And this is the first, the first mixer. Um, it's all under this can here. And then after that, oh, this thing is really heavy. <laughs> after that, it goes into the second converter. And then it goes into a third converter, which is over here. And then all of this should look familiar. Um, I think these cards are the same as my 8558. Um, so there's the filter, the amplifier, and then the second filter, those two match, and then the log amplifier. And so I think these cards are probably identical to the other one. Um, so this is the 21.4 megahertz section. And then after it gets done with this, this uh, machine has the option for the low, um, narrower bandpass, the 30 hertz, 300, 300, 130 um, hertz filters. And that's done on this card here. So this is a, uh, this is an add-on card. There's a little place here where you can plug in cards and uh, there's three open slots and then this one's been populated. So this says narrowband IF. So that's all here. So the uh, output of the log amplifier goes into this card and then comes out here and then goes down. So if you don't buy this option, then that gets plugged directly down there. And uh, this is the CRT, this big box here. Um, and it says warning 8,000 volts. <laughs> and then this is the power supply section over here. So there's a bunch of boxes here. Uh, there's a shield on top of things down here. Um, this is the card reader. Uh, this is the optional uh, oven oscillator. Uh, and that's the adjustment for it. And then this is the RF section. Um, so I haven't found the YIG yet. I think the YIG might be under here. And the the YIG is under here, and the attenuator is probably under here. Now the YIG is phase lock looped, stabilized, and that's done with this sampler. So the YIG comes off and gets sampled, and then this does the phase lock loop uh, control of the YIG. I believe that's what this is doing in here. Um, let's see if I can spin it around. So over on this side are some things. There's a card here. This board must be bolted into the instrument before power is applied. Interesting. Uh, this is the GPIB option. So that's just a card here that, uh, that plugs in. And then underneath of the uh, GPIB card, it's hard to see, um, but way in there is the lithium battery that I need to change. And it's soldered to the board. It's a 3.6 volt lithium. And so in order for me to replace that, I'll need to remove this card and remove this card and, or, and uh, change out that battery, hopefully without destroying the Cal data. So that will be interesting. Um, and the only other card that is hard to see um, is uh, this one. So this is so this card unplugs, and there's a card underneath it that has the lithium battery. 
So this is the motherboard for the uh, microprocessor board. So this board here actually goes all the way across the instrument and this sits on top of it. So the EEPROMs that have the program are like sitting here. There's six uh, one meg EEPROMs. So if I want to put in new, new firmware, I'd have to take this apart. Um, so maybe I'll do that all at once then. Put the new software in, put the battery in, do that all at once. I think that'll be good. And there's one more, one more thing I want to change. If we come back to the front, uh, you can see the, uh, you can see the first mixer here. Uh, the first mixer uh, has a, it brings in the LO from the uh, YIG, which is buried, buried under here somewhere. Um, it comes in and it gets power split and there's a, you can't really see it. Uh, but down way at the bottom here is a SMA connector that is a 50 ohm load. And that is the LO output. That LO output is used with the tracking generator option if you have it. So uh, that uh, I would like to put a cable on and bring it to the back. And there's actually, uh, it's actually a spot for it here in the back. Uh, Label IO out or LO out. There's a little plastic plug here. So I'm going to put a cable from there to here and then put that 50 ohm termination here. But that that means that the LO will, will be available externally. So I could do an external tracking generator with it. So I'll add that. In fact, I could probably add that right now. Um, but anyway, I probably should do it all. Yeah, here's a little plug that comes out. Now, when I bought the instrument, it had an error. And if you buy one of these and you get an unlock error, it's a something like LO unlocked or IF unlocked or something like that. Um, it's because this cable was missing. So uh, what does this cable do? Well, this cable connects the internal 10 megahertz oscillator to where it needs to go. So if you want to use an external, like a rubidium standard, you can bring that in directly. Otherwise, you, you're going to use the internal one. And instead of having a switch, they just have a jumper in the back. So I had to add this cable and then the unlock went away and everything worked just fine. So there you go. It's pretty much, you know, if you're a company and you have a good idea or you have a good product, you just keep building on it, right? So the input section, this looks identical to the uh, 8558. Uh, these look identical. So all of this section didn't need to be rebuilt. Looks like the first LO got rebuilt. Um, and then, uh, of course, this one's much, much faster. The digital board that has all of the, uh, the microprocessor on it and all of the ROM and RAM is a 68,000. So it's based off of a 68,000 microprocessor. And um, not sure how the LO operates, whether it's a linear LO or a digital one. Um, looks like kind of all digital design here, but I'm not quite sure if they'll read some of the chips. And uh, I don't think I have a schematic for this particular board. I think I found schematics for the rest of it, though. So anyway, there you go. That's what's inside this thing.